Hey, it's Brandon. This is Pops on Pop Culture. I want to talk to you about a new movie, Secret Life of Pets 2. That's right, a sequel to that first film that was so much fun, great for families, and rewatchable. There's a sequel. Let me catch you up, tell you what you like, what you may not like, and if it's for you. Stay tuned. My favorite quality about Pops is that he's incredibly honest. At least you always know where you stand with Pops. So I like that. I'll give it to you straight down, straight down both barrels. Brandon, this is Pops on Pop Culture, where I break down all sorts of different things pop culture related. We're going to tackle another movie conversation right now, Secret Life of Pets 2. Maybe this is the first time you've joined me. Hit that like button. Let me know how I'm doing. Maybe subscribe. Hit that little bell. Get notifications each time I put out new videos, which is about once a week or so. And the new film is called Secret Life of Pets 2. I was able to screen it early, and I want to catch you up. So, so if you don't know, the first film was actually a good success for the studio, and they did a good job of humanizing pets and giving you a really fun look at what your pets could be doing at home and it was really a kind of entertaining film an interesting dynamic of animals like to be pets or not was kind of the backdrop as well as the idea of a pet's attachment to their owner with max and duke who were these two dogs that were central to the story so that's kind of where we pick up we pick up with this story now we fast forward a little bit so we fast forward a little bit and it's central to these two dogs max and duke and now max is now voiced by Patton oswald he's replacing louis ck and we're not going into all that nonsense right now but katie their owner her life's moving on right she meets a guy they're going to get married he moves in they're going to get married and they're going to have a kid so max has not really been too keen on kids right now and he grows attached to this little boy and realizes that the little boy loves him and he has a lot of value and he becomes very protective of the kid to the point now where the kid is going to go out into the world be exposed to these dangerous things and mac kind of makes himself sick so like max max has to go to the vet at one point which is actually one of the funniest scenes in the movie it's kind of in the trailer so i won't spoil too much here but it's a great scene and different different neurotic cat in that scene he comes home with the old cone of shame and that kind of thing but the, the couple decides to take a little vacation out to a farm and that's what moves max and duke's story along a little bit they get introduced to different animals you see how a dog would react to the first time it sees a cow for instance and those kinds of things and there's a farm dog there his name is rooster and voiced by harrison ford definitely the best part of the film everything had to do with rooster was if you've watched the first film, you know there are all these other pets and other animals as well. So there's kind of like three different storylines. If you remember at the end of the first film, Snowball, who was leading the rebellion for pets to not be pets, he kind of like gets domesticated, right? He gets a little owner. She's a cute little girl rubbing his head, loving to have a fluffy white uh, pet rabbit for herself. And now Snowball, he's loving life, man. He's living as a pet. He's happy. She makes him happy. And she dresses him up like a superhero. Kind of What are you doing? What's it look like I'm doing? I'm doing superhero stuff. Tip, 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 tip. <laughs> and in comes this Shih Tzu who has an adventure for Snowball. So Snowball is going to go on this adventure with her to rescue this tiger who's being abused by this evil circus owner. Max and Duke are on this farm. Snowball is going to rescue this tiger with Daisy. And then there's the third storyline, which is really the weakest of the ones, and that's Gidget. Gidget is the fluffy, white, prim, and prissy little dog that loves Max. And Max, when he goes to the farm, he leaves her the responsibility of his favorite little ball, this little bumblebee ball that he loves so much it doesn't take her long to mess that up right she's she's fantasizing all the time about them being married and this is like their little kid and this is all in the trailer and it's kind of cutesy and it was fine the ball of course gets away and now she's on her own adventure to figure out how to get the ball back and it's with a bunch of crazy cats in a cat lady's apartment with you know tons of cats so she has to pretend to be a cat so a lot of funny moments the film is super cute the film is for pet owners man if you've got an animal and you got a pet that you're close to you're going to connect to so many moments whether it be the cats or the dogs the characters from the previous movie and that kind of thing so the film is a seven right it is a lot of entertainment a lot of fun um, 
What's weird about the film for me is I think it kind of got really obsessed with appealing to the adults. And I'm not quite sure I understand how many jokes the kids are actually getting, right? There wasn't a lot of kid belly laughing going on in the auditorium we were there, but there was a lot of giggling. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of slapsticky jokes for them. But I think it's a little weaker for the kids' audience than it is for the adult audience. So it seems to be targeted in that direction. So stay tuned and keep watching if you want to get into some more of the spoilers with me as we break down the film in even more detail. All right, well, you're with me, so let's go a little bit further. So, as I said, there's three storylines. There's a farm storyline with Max and Duke, and they meet Rooster, the farm dog. Then you have Gidget. Gidget's trying to rescue Max's favorite ball, this bumblebee ball, from this apartment of cats. And then, of course, you have a th another storyline with Snowball trying to rescue... This third storyline with Snowball trying to rescue this tiger. So the film actually does a pretty good job of balancing all three, but they don't really get equal time and they definitely don't have like equal value. Like I don't really care too much about the tiger story. Tiger story was just kind of weird. It becomes sort of an odd animal rights anti-circus thing where it was every cliche, right? He's just an evil, I think he's supposed to be a Russian circus owner, abusing the tiger, treating him very badly. I just have a hard time why the dog suddenly care about this tiger. It was it was it was it was just kind of like falsely motivated, but it does set up some fun stuff for Snowball. Snowball's a really fun character. Uh, he he Kevin Hart is a perfect voice for a Snowball, so you get these highs and lows with his reactions and emotions which play out perfectly for the character. The other the other storyline that kind of falls through the crack is the Gidget storyline. The Gidget storyline is actually totally ruined in the trailer. So if you saw the Chloe trailer with, with Chloe teaching Gidget how to be a cat, you've pretty much seen the best parts of this storyline, other than the end, when we gotta figure out how to rally the cats too and the cat lady, right? We have to go on this big rescue at the end of the film. So in between, we don't really care too much about the Gidget storyline either. So it's kind of a shame. That the, the main storyline here is about Max. And Max goes to the farm and he meets Rooster. And as I said, Rooster is voiced by Harrison Ford and it is truly the best part of the film. Everything that has to do with Rooster is funny, it is endearing, and it is the motivation that drives Max to become brave, see the world differently, like kids grow up and all of that is done very, very well. They have a scene where they rescue a sheep full of gags about how stupid sheep are. So that was really fun too. And then of course the film all culminates back to the end where all three storylines come together all the characters come back together and you see it so the first thing that was disappointing in the film was that some of these characters just got lost right we don't really get enough of of chloe and pops and you know all the other birds that were at least relevant and they're gone i don't think the falcon is even in it I, maybe i missed it i'm not even sure um so there's just interesting dynamics that were set up in the first film that kind of fall away and are ignored in this film. Um, Duke is also really ignored in this film. He's really kind of a voice of calmness and reason of like the dog that's content and challenging Max a little bit, but never really very interesting, kind of boring, kind of falls away. I thought maybe he was gonna wanna stay on the farm and not go back to the city. That seemed like the direction they were going, but that's not what they did either. So. Rooster was pretty good. I have to admit that was probably the high point uh, for all of that and that storyline. And it does work well at the end when it comes together and you see Max getting brave and you see him accepting that that uh, the little boy is going to go to school and those kinds of things. So it's better. Uh, Gidget and stuff comes together okay with more like the cat lady jokes. Like it's a funnier setup for all these cat jokes and the cat lady and the rescue of the tiger than it is about Gidget. She doesn't really become the heroine that she become in the first one. She, she, she got to play like tough girl dog in the first film. In this film, that kind of got lost a little bit with her pretending to be a cat and surrounded by all the cats and all of that. So that was a little disappointing, but it was still a lot of good jokes. Sad that so much stuff's ruined in these trailers, guys. I'm telling you, if you watch a trailer, you're like, I'm, I'm in, just stop watching the rest of the footage because they're just going to ruin something for you. And Secret Life of Pets 2 is definitely falling victim to that. So I give the film a seven. If you got little ones, it's fun, it's clean, it's a great time. There's really one curse word, and it was just silly to even have it in there. I'm so disappointed they keep doing stupid things like this. Make the film PG, maybe even G, but definitely PG for these kids to go to and have a clean, fun time with their family. I gotta be honest, if they do that, are you listening? They'll go see it multiple times, right? People wanna be entertained and want their kids to have a good time. So the film does that, it is those things. 
Uh, I think you'll enjoy it. There's a lot of messaging for adults, so you're gonna be entertained. It's not an elite film or anything like that, but I think it's gonna hold up. You're gonna enjoy watching it again. Your kids are gonna enjoy it, and you're gonna have a good time. So that's my take. Let me hear about yours. Go to the comment section, blow it up, tell me I'm great, tell me I'm crazy, tell me what your favorite part is. I think the film is gonna do well in the box office. I think it's gonna have a lot of competition from this Toy Story thing, it's gonna explode everywhere, but I gotta be honest, people don't care. They'll take their kids to two or three movies. There's plenty of time during the summer for both these films to make a lot of money. I think it's gonna do well, and I would recommend the film. So tell me what you think, hit that like or subscribe button, help me grow this channel, make more videos like this one for you. That's Pops, you're caught up.